This is the Volleyball Coaching Wizards podcast, covering everything coaching. Motivated and inspired by interviews and conversations with some of the world's great volleyball coaches. To learn more about the project, visit VolleyballCoachingWizards.com. Now here are your hosts, John Foreman and Mark Levijou. Welcome to episode 27. This is the Volleyball Coaching Wizards book, Introductory Spectacular. All right, that's a little bit over the top. But basically the idea here is we're, we've just launched, at the time you're listening to this, we've just launched the book. Um, hopefully by now a whole bunch of people have, have gotten their hands on it, had a chance to get a look at it, maybe done some reviews. But if you haven't, we have a discussion of you know, what's, the, what's in the book, what's the motivation, what Mark and I have both gotten out of it, and uh, all sorts of stuff like that. So hopefully you'll have a listen. We'll sell you on the idea of the book. If not, at least sell you on the idea of volleyball coaching wizards. Um, apologies in advance. The, the audio wasn't spectacular, but I think you'll still get you know the point that we're trying to make. So off we go. Okay, last week we launched the very first of what we hope will be a series of volleyball coaching wizards books. And in it, we selected eight interviews that we thought were pretty representative of what the volleyball wizards, volleyball coaching wizards project is in its conception and its ideas and what we're trying to achieve with it uh, in terms of sharing concepts and thought processes and philosophies and all that. So we've got coaches who've been involved with beach, one who's a primarily beach coach, we've got college coaches, we've got professional coaches, we've got uh, international level coaches, high school coaches, those who've been involved with juniors. One of them at this point is even coaching kids under 10 and even under eight uh, after a career of having coached uh, at obviously much higher levels, being involved with the, the U.S. national team and being uh, a head college coach and also coaching professionally. Uh, so what we wanted to do with this first book was just basically show people who have not had exposure to the Volleyball Coaching Wizards concept what we're all about. And that's why we picked Carl McGowan, Giovanni Gadetti is kind of the two people that more folks are likely to know uh, because they've, they've got higher profiles yep. than many of the others. Uh, on the lower end, we've got someone like Garth Pischke, who's probably only pretty well known in Canada. And mm -hmm. I don't know the Canadian system that well, but I would assume that a guy who's got over a thousand victories at the college level probably has some notoriety in his home country. Um, and, and, and he's basically won more matches than Al Skates, who's very well known in the U.S. and probably in a lot of other places as well. Uh, we've got Terry Clemens, who unfortunately had to retire, I think, in the 90s uh, because of medical reasons in the prime of her career. So at this point, she's not somebody yep. who a lot of people have heard about, but in her day was one of the best college volleyball coaches in the country, won seven national championships including six in a row in NCAA Division III. Uh, she, her, yep. her interview was amazing. And you could just, just from the conversation that, that I had with her, you could feel the energy that she must have had when she was coaching, even though she was in the hospital on a regular basis to deal with these problems that she was having. Uh, and she, I believe, I think she even said she missed the national championship match uh, because of them. It was obviously a major motivation for her having to leave the sport at least on an active basis. Uh, you, know, you interviewed Craig Marshall, who is who's an Aussie beach coach, has been involved in the Pro Tour for almost 20 years. And, you know, in going through that interview, it, it's obviously as a beach coach, and he was the, he's the first one that we've done who's, who's primarily the beach coach. We've done others who've done it kind of secondarily. Um, mm -hmm. You know, obviously he brings a different perspective, but I thought even beyond that, there was there were some angles to the way he talked about coaching and about the sport and about professionalism and development that I thought was was different and, and brings another level level of diversity to what we're trying to do. Uh, we've yep. got Tom Turco who's won seventeen high school championships in Massachusetts. He's, you know, one of those sorts of people who people in Massachusetts and in New England, that's the northeast of the US, um, know uh, because of that success and because he's also been involved in, uh, in the juniors level as well. But if you go beyond that, 
his name isn't going to ring too many bells, even though he's been twice uh, nominated or selected as National High School Coach of the Year. Uh, we've also got Ruth Nelson, who I mentioned, was the one I mentioned before, who's working with the really young kids now with her Bring Your Own Parent program. She was Ari Selinger's assistant coach in the U.S. Women's National Team back in the in the early 80s. Uh, used to coach uh, collegiately at Houston, uh, LSU, and also Iowa, I believe, if I remember, remember correctly. Uh, yeah. Profess, uh, coach professionally when there was a women's professional league in the 80s. Okay. Um, yep. Yeah. One of those... Uh, uh, evolutions that took place, you know, along the way. Uh, who, I'm missing somebody. <laughs> uh, uh, you are missing uh, Jefferson Williams. Yes, Jeff Williams, who's won, I think, almost 60 titles coaching in yep. the UK. Uh, mm-hmm. England, obviously, a lot of people will look at that as kind of a backwater. Uh, they didn't have a national program after the Olympics because they defunded it following 2012. Yep although they've since brought it back. Um, but he's he's Jamaican by way of Canada and also was involved in playing and coaching in Sweden before he landed in, in London. So another really interesting perspective. He's, he's influenced at least the whole generation of modern UK coaches, uh, which mm-hmm. is also a factor of you know, what we're trying to do here. So it's a, it's a really interesting collection. Um, and, I, and I hope that the readers of the book appreciate that and really kind of get a lot from out of all those perspectives. Yeah. Uh, I mean, obviously we, we deliberately chose them to be, uh, broadly representative and cover, a you know, a, a wide range of, uh, of areas of levels of, uh, genders and so on and so forth. So, uh, I think that there's, an amazing amount of uh, of stuff in that uh, in that group of eight interviews, and um, you know we've oh, how many have we done now? It was around forty, yeah, nearly it's about 40. forty. Yeah, so um, this is really just, in a sense, the the tip of the iceberg of uh, what we've already got and and what we hope to do in in the future. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, we talked about in the introductory podcast episode zero about the kind of the, the motivations behind the Volleyball Coaching Wizards project and where the idea came from and all that. And your, from your perspective, one of the big things that we're looking to do is to, to develop a, a volleyball or at least expand a limited amount of current volleyball literature. Um, so why don't you kind of go into what you see where this book starts us on the path toward. I'm for a long time. I've been a, a student of volleyball, not just a student of volleyball, but a student of coaching as well. And and in in the English speaking world, particularly because it's the one I live mostly in, uh, in terms of literature, and at least um, there's a, a rich a rich literature of, of books about coaches by coaches about coaching um you know going through the 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 gamut of uh of of sports and and i've read a lot particularly about basketball because i always thought that at least from a management point of view basketball and volleyball were the two sports that were most similar but you know nfl coaches soccer coaches um australian football coaches etc etc but there's a, a really limited literature on volleyball. There's a little bit of technical literature, which is actually also not very uh, good or broad. And then on top of that, there's, in English at least, there's you know half a dozen books that uh, that have been been written on or about coaches. There's, um, and most of those are, are long since out of print. Books by um, um, trying to catch, trying to think of the French guy's name now, who worked in oh, in uh, yeah. UK and influenced uh, Jefferson Williams, <laughs> Ralph Hippolyte. Yep, yep, 
Ralph Hippolyte has a couple of books. Um, Doug Beale wrote a book. Uh, there were some books that were translated into English by the Canadian Volleyball Association in the 70s. Um, and currently, uh, Mike Hebert, Hebert and Terry Pettit basically are, are the, the most published volleyball authors. But essentially, there's, there's nothing... And what there is is centered around a really small part of the volleyball world, which is uh, which is the U.S. collegiate system. And uh, there's so much more volleyball out there. There's so many incredible coaches with knowledge and passion and ideas, and um, that in the English-speaking world that we firstly hardly ever get to hear about or hear from and just in volleyball in general there there's just such a a a little amount that exists and and uh when you came to me with the proposal for this project uh that was one of the first things that that came to my mind the the opportunity to be able to add something of value to the to the entire volleyball community the entire volleyball world and this is a, a this book in terms of written uh, written work is the is the first step and as you said we we envisage this being a series of books um, this one is is just direct transcripts of interviews uh, so that uh, readers can uh, feel in a sense the uh, um, the, the work of the, the coaches that we've chosen but uh, as we go along uh, the our goal is to collect uh, ideas on particular themes and put them uh, also into uh, into book form written form and uh, we'll see how we where we go from there right yeah one of the things that I, that I've enjoyed in listening to these interviews uh, along this, this literature perspective is the stories. Yeah, obviously, all these coaches coach from different geographies and backgrounds and nationalities and perspectives. Um, but it's funny how some of the stories overlap. For example, Jeff Williams, when he was a youth player in the national team in Canada, played against Karch Karai and Dusty Dvorak and the guys that went on to win the gold in 84 for the U.S. national team. Mm-hmm. And if you don't know that, going in i mean if you just kind of met jeff at a you know at a match or a coaching conference or whatever in england you'd have no idea that 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 interaction has taken place and that he played college volleyball in the states and that he was influenced a lot by the u.s system but also by hippolyte and the ideas that hippolyte was bringing along and also Mm -hmm. the ideas of anders christensen in sweden who we've also interviewed yeah and you know talking with with Giovanni Gadetti, you see a similar sort of thing. He's obviously been influenced by the U.S. programs, but he's also been influenced by the Russian programs and by the Brazilian programs and just being out and, and around and watching and interacting. Um, and, and so it's fun to see how these ideas are kind of being washed around coaches, not just in one country, but all over the world. And you know, and we haven't had a chance to, to interview Julio Velasco so far, and hopefully we will at some point. But there's another strong influence, especially for somebody like Gadetti coming up through the Italian system. Um, but I imagine for a lot of people in Europe. And, and so I, I, I like the historical stuff, and I know you do too. And you, so getting to see how all these things link back. And then, of course, you know, all the U.S. coaches, up, certainly of a certain generation, talk about Jim Coleman. And then the influence that he had on them, either directly, because they worked with him, Ruth Nelson worked with him in, ter- in terms of the people in the book, um, Carl McGowan worked with him, both <laughs> directly with him at some point in their career. And there's, and by extension, there's a lot of other coaches who w- or were, say, one step removed. Um, you know, among the art of coaching guys, Terry Liskevich and Russ Rose, I believe, both worked with or you know, we're heavily influenced by Coleman. <clears throat> so I, I find that stuff really interesting. And then, and at least for some of us, there's 
kind of a moan and groan about the lack of any sort of sense of history among volleyball participants, certainly, and, and even among coaches and just where the sport has come from. And yep. yeah, You listen to somebody like Ruth, who talked a lot of history in her interview about the sort of things that were, were being done in the 60s and 70s that people kind of look at as only having become modern developments. So it's, 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 you know, nice to see that sort of stuff going on and, and just to realize that, hey, you know, this, this sport didn't start with rally score or in the U.S. it didn't start with the 84 Olympics when the men's national team won the gold medal. You know, there's, there's a lot more history going on here that a lot of us were never taught and never, or never heard of coming up. That's part of the the literature thing that uh, with with so little written record of of coaches of events of of uh, tournaments, there's you know not this this history that that other sports have and and it's always been amusing to me when you know, I've had players from different countries in my teams and I've been able to teach them something of their own volleyball history the history of volleyball in their country it's always uh amusing to me in some sad <laughs> sad way <laughs> but a one as you were talking there you talked about uh, about Guidetti being influenced by by this coach and that coach and uh it came into my mind that it's a one one theme that runs through a lot of these interviews is that the while there is no formal volleyball literature or formal volleyball education, I guess in in that sense, a lot of these coaches have uh, informal contact with other coaching wizards and other top coaches. Uh, Guidetti talks in his interview about just cold calling uh, Doug Beal and going to visit him uh, in his office for uh, for a week. And um, a lot of American coaches I talk about uh, experiences they had with you know, with the foreign coaches who came through the the U.S. in the 70s. And I know that uh, um, that Beal and and Neville and the guys from that era spent a lot of time with the the Russian coaches, and they, the coaches amongst themselves have this uh, this informal literature, but of course it never gets out in uh, any further than the sense of uh, watching the teams play and and uh, and maybe being able to see bits of of, uh, of different volleyball schools in. In some particular team, but um, uh, that's something that that dawned on me uh, actually, just as you were talking about it earlier. Well, and and actually to that point, one of the features of these interviews is almost uniformly the Wizards talk about the eagerness to get out and learn from other people. Yes, and to go and watch other other teams play and other coaches coach and. And at the same Absolutely. time, to be open to letting other people do the same thing with them. Yep. Yes. Uh, I've the experiences that I've had. I've when I've contacted a coach or um, or asked to visit a practice or anything like that. It's there's almost never any sort of issue with it. And and uh, and conversely, uh, when people contact me and they want to visit a practice or have a conversation or or whatever I'm always open to that I've never I've never not let anybody come to practice and and when I when they do then uh, we always spend some time afterwards going going through what happened why it happened uh, and so on and and so forth and uh, for me that's again part of the same process that that uh, or the same mentality maybe that brought us into this into this project yeah i agree and my hope is that you know we can we can create an impact for for volleyball literature here um 
when I was just a couple weeks ago, I went looking through Amazon's listings just to just to see what what volleyball books were on their top sellers and kind of compare it to other sports. And and to your point about the literature in basketball and football and other sports, you see a lot more in the way of stories about people and teams, players and coaches and teams. Yeah. Whereas in volleyball, it's mostly technical stuff. It's yeah. It's drill books. Drill books. It's <laughs> games. It's mental training. Okay, yeah, you might have a biography of Misty May Trainer. You might have a biography of Terry Walsh. Yeah. But, you know, Karch has a biography from years ago that, you know, every once in a while people might buy, but it's, it's so dated at this point, it's probably not on the top of too many people's consciousness. St. John Smith uh-huh. did a really good book on, on the, the origins, origins of beach volleyball in the U.S. Yeah. And if you have any interest in the history of volleyball, that's worth a read. Now, yep. that's whether or not you agree with the kind of the volleyball politics of St. John Smith, because there are people who do and there are people who don't. But it, you know, it's one of those things where you can read back and you can, and you can see the names that influenced the development of the sport and how, you know, how things came along. Um, but those books, you know, it was 20 years ago. And so yep. they're on shelves in people's, uh, hopefully libraries. <laughs> people have libraries anymore. Um, but, I do. Yeah, well, I've seen firsthand your library. Um, but it's, you know, they're not books that are going to be showing up on Amazon's top selling list. No. And, and certainly they're not books from volleyball that are going to show up in the more global sports consciousness. And that's, and as much as we're obviously looking to do something for volleyball here, ex- not we're not thinking of that exclusively because frankly, a lot of the stuff that comes out in these interviews is not volleyball specific, which I think is really cool. Well, we're not really talking very much about volleyball at all in the interviews. We're talking about coaching and and the the principles of of coaching don't really change from uh, from sport to sport, and or at least team sport to team sport. Mm-hmm. And even uh, even the beach volleyball interview with Craig Marshall, the it's still a, a team because it involves interaction between between people and um, the, on the court and off the court. Obviously, the interactions between players and coaches is part of the the team dynamic, the team functioning. So, uh, I would go as far as to say that that uh, someone interested in coaching or studying coaching could easily start with this book regardless of the sport that they were involved with. Right. Agreed. Um, one of the coolest things about this whole project, and more specifically about the book, is the feedback that we're getting on it is coming from, is, is all been great, for sure. Um, I don't think we've heard anybody say a bad word about it anywhere along the way. Uh, even, no. even somebody who kind of at first didn't really like the name once he <laughs> he learned where the name came from was like all right okay i can go along with that um yeah but what's really been kind of cool for me is the wizards themselves that we've interviewed have all been really really into the idea of the project yes which it just makes it that much easier for us to want to keep doing it yes and even uh there's even been some coaches who, for language reasons, uh, haven't felt that they could participate in the way that they would like. Um, still, were were really supportive of the of the project, and and I have to say that from my perspective, there are things that have happened, that are things that have been talked about in the interviews that that you've given that I've um, uh, also done that I actually use in my coaching that I've straight away picked up and said, all right, I'm on that. And uh, it's uh, it's interesting. It's a tool. Um, it's uh, uh, stimulating ideas. It's, uh, you know, I think that the whole project is, if I do say so myself, uh, an incredibly valuable project. I agree. I mean, and I agree in terms of taking up stuff that, that have been talked about in interviews and going, yeah, I, I can see how I can you know wrap that into what I'm doing. 
or at least you know let it influence me in some fashion about the way I think about something, uh, which is obviously one of the other rewarding elements of being able to talk with all these people and listen to all these interviews. And you know the the prospect is we do many many more. Um, you know when I first put the list together, we had something like 300 names on it, between names that we came up with and names that other people suggested. So there's no reason yep. to suggest we're going to stop anytime soon. <laughs> no, there's lots of people still to go. That's right. But for now, eight people in a book. It's already out. Get your hands on it. Tell your friends. Let's get a volleyball book on the Amazon top sellers for all sports and not just for volleyball. That would be great. There you go. Thanks for listening. We hope you enjoyed this episode. For show notes and more, visit volleyballcoachingwizards.com backslash podcast. Got an idea for a future episode or want to ask a question? Send an email to podcast at volleyballcoachingwizards.com. Thanks for listening. We hope you enjoyed this episode. For show notes and more, visit volleyballcoachingwizards.com backslash podcast. Got an idea for a future episode or want to ask a question? Send an email to podcast at volleyballcoachingwizards.com.